Hi everyone, welcome to All Nations Church Sunday Stream. My name's Dave. It's really good to be together today. I've got a psalm to kick us off. Uh, it's Psalm 118 verse 24 and it simply says, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to give God thanks in the midst of these changing times. Uh, for many of us, some of us are going back to work and some of us are still working from home. Some of us are trying to juggle family life. We've had the children at home for school and now it's summer holidays and there's still work to contend with. And for other of us, we are back out into society. We're meeting in parks. We're having a great time in our gardens with friends and family. And some of us are coming to the end of a time of shielding. But whatever's going on in your context right now, we can all give God thanks and we can all rejoice because today is the day that he has made for us. And we're going to rejoice right now and celebrate with two families who have experienced big change at this time. Firstly, we're going to celebrate with Tim and Kerry Briggs. They welcomed on the 3rd of July their twin daughters, Elspeth and Phoebe, into the world. We want to say welcome, Elspeth, and welcome, Phoebe. We are so excited to meet you. Uh, but right now, we just trust that you as a family, Briggs, are blessed and are knowing God's peace and rest as you adapt to this new season and all the excitement that new life brings. And we want to celebrate with Toby and Alice Wilhelm as well, who welcomed on the 24th of July, baby Io. Welcome Io into the world. We are so excited to meet you too. Uh, first time parents, it's going to be a, a big time of change for you guys. And it's all going to be good as God leads you and provides absolutely everything that you need. Rest, peace, sleep, strength, family, friends, you name it. God has it for you. It's the year of plenty for you guys. We're so excited. Um, to welcome baby Io. It's changing times for us all. Uh, and in it all, God is preparing us all. That's been our theme in the word. Last week, Dave Shutt spoke to us and, and we went on a virtual walk with him and he shared how we can take the word of God and give it priority in our life. And James Aubrey today is gonna to bring the word and continue in the theme of preparation. But before we do that, Josh and Pedro are gonna come in here and they're gonna lead us in a time of worship. So we're gonna turn our hearts towards the Lord right now. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can come into your presence, that we can know you. You have made a way for us to know you, to be called your children. You are so worthy of all of our praise. So we just look to you right now, seated on heaven's throne. And in fact, we join in with all of heaven right now to say that you are holy. You are worthy, Lord Jesus, to receive all glory. We give you our praise this morning because we love you. You are so good. Amen over to Josh and Pedro. Let's sing together, Where O Death is Your Victory. Where O Death is Your Victory. Where O Death is Your Sting. The curse of sin is broken. Captives are set free. Jesus Christ won the victory. Jesus Christ conquered sin. All who trust in Him have been ransomed and redeemed. See the empty tomb. Now the stone lies rolled away. Death.
Jesus, we thank you this morning. The death has been swallowed up in your victory. And Lord Jesus, we come to your table, which is a celebration of all that you did in your death and your resurrection, and all that you're going to do as you return for your bride. We love you, Lord, and we celebrate you this morning. Thank you, Jesus. In Luke 22, it talks about when Jesus first instituted this meal with his disciples. And when he took the bread and he took the wine, he said, do this in remembrance of me. He says that again in 1 Corinthians 11, do this in remembrance of me. And I've been thinking a bit about that phrase, do this in remembrance of me. And for me, that's the language of testimony. That's the language that says, this is what Jesus has done. And so I know this is what he's going to do. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, it says in Revelation. What that means is that as we testify of what Jesus has done, we are speaking with a spirit of prophecy to what he will do because what he does reveals his nature to us. It reveals what he's like. And so we know that he'll do it again and again and again because he's the same yesterday, today and forever. I don't know about you, but sometimes I find it hard to remember everything that I probably should remember. Maybe you forget where your keys are. Maybe you... I don't know, you forget your homework or whatever you, you might forget in life, but uh, Jesus never forgets what he's done for us. And he wants to help us this morning to remember all that he's done in this table. My son at the moment has a, a little tendency. He's got a pretty good memory, but when he forgets something, instead of saying, oh, I forgot this, he says, I want daddy to remember it. So if I ask him, what was your favorite thing about today? And he can't remember what he did today. He says, I want daddy to remember, or I want mummy to remember. And so as we come to the table this morning, it's a time for us to do this in remembrance of Jesus, to remember all that he did for us, all that he's doing for us, all that he will do for us. But if you find yourself in a place this morning where you think, Lord, I want to remember what you've done in my life. I want to remember what this table means. You can come to your father and say, Father, help me remember. Help me to remember that in this table, in your brokenness, you made me whole. Help me to remember that in being poured out, you filled me. Help me to remember that in your death, you brought life. Help me to remember that in your resurrection, you took away the sting of death and you rose in victory. And help me to remember that you're coming again for your glorious bride. You're coming again with your kingdom. You're coming again to fulfill all that's been spoken of. You're coming again in glory and in power. So let's do this in remembrance of Jesus. And take a moment now to speak to the Father and say, Father, remind me of all your goodness and all your faithfulness in my life. Remind me of what this table means for me and for you. sing a song now that just talks about that exactly what Jesus has done for us it talks about the blood of Christ it talks about the power of God to us it talks about the love that God has for us let's sing together the blood of Christ the blood of Christ has come me, cleansed me from all sin, he 
Thanks, Josh and Pedro. We're going to continue in our worship now by bringing our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Uh, Joe and Paolo are going to sing a song for us as we do that. It's called You Are Worthy, which is a reflection on all that God has done for us and who God is. And the conclusion is simply, Jesus, you are worthy. So can I encourage you that as we prepare to give, to bring our tithes and our offerings to God, reflect, even if it's just over this year, on all that God has done for you all the good things that he's given you, all the provision that he has provided in your life. And let it raise your faith, let it stir hope in you so that as we sow, we can be expectant of a great harvest that on the other side of that, we'll have even more to sow to God again. He's so, so good. All the details are going to come up on the screen now and we're going to join with Joe and Paolo and say, Jesus, you are worthy. sin laid upon Jesus we had no hope until he came and by his precious blood he purchased all who will call on his name what great love to be called children such lavish grace or may be saved and there on the cross the work was finished you have opened the way oh you sat down for so oh honor
Good morning. It's great to be with you again, wherever you are in the world, however you're watching. Thanks for joining us. I trust that you've known and experienced God's grace and peace in your life this week. And um, if you've been with us before at All Nations on a Sunday stream, you'll know that at the moment we're in a season where we're talking about preparation. We feel it's necessary to get ourselves ready for the next season of our lives with God. God's been leading us and teaching us about the importance of preparation. And I was thinking a little bit this week about some of the preparations that go into activities that usually take place at this time of year. It's summer here in the UK. And for many of us, that's an opportunity to go on holiday, visit family, have a break from our normal usual surroundings and so what do you do you you pack your bags you head off but have you ever had that moment maybe you're traveling down the motorway maybe you're on the train or the plane or maybe you've arrived at your destination and you suddenly realized you've forgotten something the kids have forgotten their favorite toy the baby has forgotten their blanket i remember one time when i was younger my parents took my sister and I on a holiday to France. We drove to France. And when we arrived at our holiday cottage, my mum realized that she had forgotten her contact lens solution. And so I remember this frantic journey around all the pharmacies in the local village where my dad, who spoke no French, was trying to communicate with these pharmacists who spoke no English about trying to get contact lens solution for my mum. It didn't go well. Maybe you've had that feeling too, where you, you get where you're meant to go and you think, oh, no, I, I forgot something. And so that's why it's, it's so good, isn't it? When you've done your packing, when you've done your preparation, to double check it again, when you go through your suitcases, you go through your bags, you just look to see, have I remembered this? Have I remembered that? Then you know you can safely go on your journey. Today's going to be a bit like that because I'm going to bring to uh, your remembrance some things that we've already talked about with regards to preparation because I just don't want anybody to miss the vital lessons that God is teaching us at the moment. And sometimes we can miss them because we forget them. Uh, sometimes we can miss them because we've ignored them. Other times we can miss them just because they've passed us by. So I want to remind you today that preparation in the Bible is a good thing. Um, we prepare in hope, we prepare in great expectation and anticipation because we know and we serve the God of hope. We serve and follow the God who has a good plan for his people. Jesus said to his disciples in John 14, in my father's house are many mansions and I go to prepare a place for you. In Ephesians 2, it says that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which he has prepared in advance for us to do. If you've not taken time over the last few weeks to, to think on that verse in the Bible, I'd really encourage you to do so. God saved you. He saved you with a great purpose and a plan in mind, and he prepared good works in advance for you to do. Not for you to miss, not for you to fail at, but for you to do. God prepared good things for you to do in advance. And so when we think about preparation, when we talk about preparation, when we look at preparation in the Bible, we know it's a good thing. God is preparing us in this day for exciting adventures in the future. And right preparation, we've said in the past, requires right priorities. Before we get our actions right, We've got to get our attitudes right. As a man thinks within his heart, it says in Proverbs, so he is. And we've looked before at the fact that Jesus sets for us the priority of our lives. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read uh, some verses. We've read them before, but these are so powerful and so precious to us in these days as we prepare ourselves together for what God has for us in the future. I'm going to read from verse 19 and this is what Jesus says, don't collect for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but collect for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth 
nor rust destroys, and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light within you is darkness, how deep is that darkness? No one can be a slave of two masters, since either he will hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot be slaves of God and money. This is why I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add a single cubit to his height by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Learn how the wild flowers of the field grow. They don't labour or spin thread, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendour was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, O you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the idolaters eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Jesus sets for us the priorities of our life. He says to us, don't store up treasures on earth where moth and rust and thieves can destroy, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Jesus teaches us, don't serve money, serve God. And Jesus teaches us, don't worry about your life. Instead, seek first the kingdom of God. Or as the New Living Translation says, make the kingdom of God your primary concern. You know, every day we have the opportunity to decide what our priorities are gonna be. Are we gonna live for the moment? Are we going to serve ourselves? Are we going to worry about our surroundings? Or are we going to live with eternity in mind? Are we going to serve God? And are we going to seek first his kingdom? You know, this summer is a big summer of decision for so many of you watching today. Some of you are planning on where you're going to go to university. Some of you have finished university studies and are planning where you're going to go next. Some of you are having to rethink career opportunities, uh, reassess your financial options. Some of you are having to consider how you care for um, elderly family or uh, loved ones around you. I just want to remind you today that in whatever decisions you have to make going forward, make your decisions with the kingdom of God as your primary concern. Choose where you're gonna study, Choose where you're going to work. Choose where you're going to live with the kingdom of God in mind. Choose how you're going to use your money. Choose how you're going to steward your possessions. Choose who you will marry and how you will spend your time by seeking first the kingdom of God. Make it your primary concern. Make it your priority. Eagerly seek it the way um, you look for something in your house that you've lost. Eagerly seek the kingdom of God in the same way that, as Dave shared with us last Sunday, the woman eagerly sought throughout her house for the lost coin. Jesus taught us to pray. He taught his disciples to pray. And when he taught them to pray, he said this, pray this way, our Father in heaven, may your name be honoured as holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The priority of our prayers is the pursuit of the kingdom of God. Yes, God is interested in meeting our needs. Yes, God is interested in clothing us and feeding us and healing us if we're sick. God is concerned about the welfare of his people. But God is looking for people who are concerned with his priorities. 
Is he gonna find that in you today? I believe he will. I believe I'm talking today to people who are making the kingdom of God their primary concern. Now it's enough for us to do that simply because Jesus says to do it. If Jesus says that the priority of my life is to be the kingdom of God, he's right, he made me, he saved me, he knows what's best for me. And so Jesus saying to us, seek first the kingdom, it's enough for us. We say, Lord Jesus, we will seek first your kingdom. But as I've said to you in the past, the kingdom of God is worth seeking because it is universal. I'm gonna bring up one of my favorite scriptures again, Matthew 24, verse 14. The good news of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. You know, that scripture came alive to me a few years ago when I was traveling into Eastern Europe and I was in a hotel room in Eastern Europe uh, on my own, feeling a little bit tired. Um, I'd arrived in this country in Eastern Europe and I'd been invited to to share something with some Christians in the area and I just didn't know what to say or to do for them. I thought, who am I that I would have anything to say to believers in another part of the world? And I was reading my Bible in the hotel room that morning And I got to, in my readings to Matthew 24, and that verse just came alive to me and I heard the Holy Spirit say, James, my kingdom works everywhere. And that's so true. The kingdom of God works everywhere. It works for everyone, male and female, black and white, rich, poor, educated, uneducated. The kingdom of God works everywhere. It's a universal kingdom. We are in the middle of a world crisis. We are aware that there's a virus affecting the whole world. And yet, you know, this world was not created by God to be filled with a virus. This world was created by God to be filled with his kingdom. And that is a reality for us today. We know that to be true, that God wants to fill this earth with his kingdom. And so we put it first in our lives. The kingdom of God, as I've said to you before, is an unlimited kingdom. The prophet Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, of the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. Just think about that for a second. Wherever we find the government of God, we find the peace of God. You can know that for yourself today, even in the midst of uncertainty all around you even the midst of trial and tribulation, even the midst of challenge and circumstance, even in the midst <clears throat> of, of questions you may have or uncertainties that your family are bringing to you, you can know the government of God and you can know the peace of God and you can know those in increasing measure. Jesus is the source of our peace and he says to his disciples in John's gospel, my peace I give to you. I don't give you peace as the world gives to you. The Christian doesn't get their peace from the world. The Christian doesn't get their peace from their surroundings. The Christian gets his or her peace from Jesus. And if the increase of his government and peace, there'll be no end. The kingdom of God is an unshakable kingdom. I've shared that with you before, but I wanna bring all these things to your remembrance today because I want them in your, in your mind. I want them in, in your hands as you go forward. The kingdom of God is an unshakable kingdom. Hebrews 12 verse 28 says this, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let's be thankful and so worship God acceptably and reverently because he is a consuming fire. We are receiving a kingdom. Just think about that. Jesus says to his disciples in Luke 12 that the Father is pleased to give us the kingdom. The kingdom is something we're seeking, it's something we're pursuing, and yet at the same time, it's something that we're receiving. Are you receiving the kingdom today? Are you taking hold of it and moving towards it? Because we're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Here's a very simple hallmark of a life lived in the light of that. It's a life of thanksgiving. It's a life of gratitude, of recognizing the grace of God. Let us be thankful, the writer to the Hebrew says, And therefore, let's worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. Do you know you can worship God acceptably today simply by giving him thanks? Because you are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken.
I trust that those things are going deep down into your heart this morning. You might be hearing this for the first time. You might have heard me say these things over the last few times I've been with you. But it's so important that we have everything ready and right for our journey, that nothing's forgotten, that nothing's ignored, that nothing's left behind. But that as we make preparation for the exciting future that God has for us, our priorities are straight, our attitudes are right, and we know that God has created us to be a people who will seek first his kingdom, a people for whom he has prepared good works in advance for us to do, a people that Jesus has prepared a place for us in his Father's house. I want to just finish off this morning by reminding you that Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, That seeking first the kingdom of God is a solution to worry. Jesus says, don't worry. Don't worry about your food, about your clothes. Instead, seek first the kingdom of God. And I just want to say to you today that where there could be worry or anxiety or fear in your life, Jesus is aware of that. He doesn't come today to chide you or hurt you or blame you. Instead, he comes with a solution, and his solution is this. Seek first his kingdom. As you put his priorities in your life, you can know a peace that surpasses all understanding, and you can know an excitement and an anticipation for your future. I trust that you know the peace and the grace of God today and all throughout the rest of the week in ever-increasing measure. May you be strong. May you be courageous. May you be full of hope. May you be a blessing to everybody around you so that everyone in your family, everyone in your neighbourhood, everyone in your workplace knows that you are different because God is with you. Be blessed. Have a great rest of the day. And I will see you again soon. Well, before we end our time together and we take that word and go, God, how does that look in my life? It's really important to say that although we're watching this stream in our own context, this is not a life that we live in isolation. Uh, God calls us into a family. So if you are watching this and you have questions about a life of faith, what does it mean to be a Christian? We would absolutely love to hear from you. Please call us. Please email us. We'd love to chat with you and introduce you to this Jesus that we simply love, that we serve uh, and that we live for. Equally, you may have a testimony, something great that God has done in your life and you want to share that with us and you want to encourage the church, please get in contact with the email address hello at allnationschurch.org.uk because we want to tell what God is doing far and wide. Equally, you may be thinking, I've heard some things on these Sunday streams, but I'm just not sure how to put them into practice. Well, Dave Shutt said last week, if you like to learn how to read the Bible, for example, we would love to hear from you and we can help you with that. Whatever your question, please be in touch. Uh, We're a family. God puts us in a family and we help one another. Speaking of being in families, we are so excited that the church family tomorrow on our day of prayer and fasting can meet here physically to pray in the evening. It's the first time that we've done something like this. Uh, under these new guidelines, in these new circumstances. So there's a little bit for us to learn. So we're just asking you to bear with. Uh, And as part of that, we're asking that if you'd like to be here, then please register to do so, so that we can manage numbers. Now, it may be that the link that went out during the week and the link on the Sunday uh, email that helps you register, uh, it might already be full. Uh, And if that's the case, don't worry, because there's going to be plenty more opportunities to meet together and to pray. Uh, But to help with that, if you're unable to be here for whatever reason, we're still going to put on alongside the physical prayer meeting, a Zoom room that will interact with the physical meeting here. So there'll be contributions from both and we'll all be able to break out and to pray. And that's the main thing is that God has called us together to pray that his kingdom will come, his will will be done here on the earth in our day. And he's going to find in us a willing people. So we're really, really looking forward to that. That's tomorrow. Uh, here at the building, please register for that. Uh, But now it's time to finish and to head out into the week. Whatever you're doing this week, if you're meeting with life groups, if you're heading into the foyer on Zoom afterwards, I trust that you are blessed. And we're really looking forward to next Sunday because next Sunday, the youth are doing a whole takeover of the Sunday stream. So we're really excited to hear what God has to say for us through them. 
but otherwise trust that you are blessed as God continues to work in and through you and prepare you for what he has in store. God bless you guys.